Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. As you can see, I'm not in my home theater, but I'm in my friend Grant's home theater. In this video, we're actually going to be upgrading this 103 inch elite screen. Interestingly enough, this was my first screen, as you can see in this picture, back when, uh, many years ago, when I started building out my home theater. Now, Grant's got a very, very budget-friendly setup. I think he's got maybe $6,000 total in his entire home theater. And so, um, in this video, it's not a home theater tour. Really, we're just going to focus on um, getting the screen installed, kind of seeing what that's going to do change-wise, and we'll talk with him afterward. Um, visually, like how much difference has that made? I'm also going to talk a little bit about um, the differences of 2.35 aspect ratio, which we've got here. The new screen is 122 inch uh, screen in 16 by 9 from Elite, and we're super grateful for Elite for providing this uh, screen for this video. And so we're going to be uh, going through this. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully, the conversation will help you. When you're thinking about, should I go with 16 by 9? Should I go with 2.35 to 1? When is it a good time to upgrade the size of your screen? And does it make that much difference uh, in the visual aspect of it? So with that said, we're going to go ahead and get this unboxed, get it installed, and then we'll see what it looks like. First, we laid out all of the components. One thing I really like is that each one of these boxes are clearly labeled as well as the individual parts that you'll need for the assembly. Next, you'll want to stretch out the included foam sheet. That's what we'll be using to place the fabric on top and assemble the unit. Inside the dark star box, you'll find the fabric. You can see right here, it's pretty well protected. Inside boxes A, B, and C, you can see we've got two pieces of a frame. And the great thing about the frame is it already has the black velvet attached to it. So that's one less thing that you've got to install. Next, we unboxed part A, B, and C. So inside box B is going to be the upper left part of the frame you can see there. And then it also holds the bottom right part of the frame here. Part C is going to go on the bottom left of the frame. And then it's going to be the upper right part of the frame here. You can see here the Elite Screen logo is going to be at the bottom right part of the screen and this right side is going to be angled here. So now we have the top and the bottom parts of the frame laid out on the mat, and you can see the sides on the left and the right are gonna be angled, and then the two pieces in the middle, those are going to be your square pieces right there. All right, next we're gonna take a C bag, and I've separated it, so we'll have four of these angled brackets, and they've got smaller holes in them, and then there's two straight pieces, again with smaller holes. And then the BD is going to have four angled brackets with large holes and two straight brackets with the big holes. So now we're gonna take the straight piece from this AC bag with the smaller holes. We're gonna slide it right into this little track here. Same thing on the other side. Just like that. And then we're going to take the one from the BD bag with the larger holes, and that's actually going to fit on top of here. And then we're going to screw those together. And then we'll use these angle brackets, the same method. We'll take the angle bracket with the small holes, put that into the track on each corner, take the larger hole, put it on top, and we'll screw those together. So I found that if you put two screws on one side, That'll make it easy to take these two and kind of push those together so they lock. And then you can put in the next two remaining screws. So now we're going to take the remaining corner brackets. Again, we've got one with large holes, one with small holes. Take the small holes, slide those into little tracks like that. And get that aligned. Make sure it forms a perfect right angle like that. We'll take the larger hole. L bracket, use our screws, and we'll secure those four right there. Okay, so we have the frame assembled. I just want to see, just for kicks, we're going to pick this up, and we're going to lay it right over the top of his existing 103-inch screen. I want to see kind of how much larger. I want to give you a visual 
How much bigger? Holy cow, that's going to be a sweet upgrade. So next we're gonna place the fabric on top of the frame. And then we're gonna unroll just a small section and then secure three springs just to keep it secured to the other side. And with it secured to the left side, now you can see as we unroll it, it's gonna stay in place. When you get to the middle section, you wanna go ahead and secure one here at the bottom, as well as one at the top, and then we'll proceed to finish unrolling it out onto the frame. So now that we have springs in the corners, as well as in the middle parts of the frame, we're going to install the additional springs. Now, one thing I'd recommend is they do include white gloves, so we'll go ahead and put those on Probably should have had those on to begin with, but honestly, I didn't think about it at that time. And then we'll be using this little hook tool to secure each one of the springs. So we're gonna have eight different sections that we're gonna work on. We're gonna start over here and work on this section right here. Then we're gonna mo move to the opposite end and work on this section. Then we'll move to this section, then this one, then this side, this side, then lastly, this side, and this side. All right, so now we've got all of the springs securing the fabric to the frame. That took us about 30 minutes with two people working on it. The next thing we're gonna do is take this metal, or this um, aluminum frame right here, and it's going to attach in the groove on that other side. We're gonna slide it up here, find that groove, and then we just pull it this way until it gets right in the center like that and that's going to keep this nice and taut we did notice that some of these springs right here were going getting loose but that's because this frame is wanting to pull in towards the middle because of all the tension and then this metal support bar straightens that back up and so now each one of these are nice and tight all right so the next step is we've got to secure these brackets to the wall so here's the deal we got our fingers crossed i'm hoping that these brackets that we've already installed with a previous elite screen are going to work with this so we're going to try to put it up see what happens. All right, as you can see, it did not work. So what we're gonna do is install the brackets that Elite provides with the screen. So we'll get those two secured up here. And the cool thing is it's just a cleat system. So there's a groove underneath the top lip of the frame. And so you literally just put it up, anchor it um, right across there, just make sure that it's secure. And then there's also another bracket that goes on the bottom just to hold the bottom piece up against the wall. All right, Grant, we've got your new screen, 120 inches. You upgraded from a 103 inch. And kind of walk us through what type of content do you normally watch? Most of the content that I watch is in 16 by nine because mm -hmm. most of my video games are in 16 by nine and most of the TV shows that I watch are in 16 by nine. So when I originally started out, I thought a two by 35 by one was gonna work for yeah. me. Uh, but seeing this now and the upgrade and, and the stuff that I watch, it's so much better. Yeah. So interesting, so the 103 inch, your screen in 16 by nine on a 2.35 to one um, screen was about what, 80 inches? 80 inches. Yeah. So 80 inches going to 122 inches is pretty massive. And the cool thing is, I think your front row is about 14 feet. And so that's a pretty immersive experience from what I know you had mentioned when we first fired it up, you were like, whoa, and you were sitting in the back row. I was sitting in the back row, not the front row. Yeah. And I was playing video games and I'm like, I'm trying to keep up with everything that's on the screen and couldn't. So yeah. it's, it's pretty like awesome. Visually oh, yes. kind of stimulating. Just, yes. It's definitely a, a different experience. And I've always been an advocate of going with a big screen versus even like a even an 85 inch OLED. They look beautiful. But man, I'm a projector guy, and having a dedicated uh, theater room in here is definitely um, just a cool experience, something that you can't get, I think, from at least current TVs. Now, one thing that's interesting about this screen is, you know, we talked about how it's kind of a gray screen instead of a, a white, so that's going to help with contrast, and it's also going to help with um, just the overall image quality of it. You'll lose a tad bit of brightness. I think this one is like a 0.9 gain. So it drops it down just a little bit as far as your brightness. But I think the image quality looks fantastic. I love what we're seeing here. And another interesting thing too is with this particular screen, they have um, a wider, what they call a viewing angle. And so if you've got a, maybe you got this set up in a living room, it does have ambient light rejection qualities. And so it's going to reject a lot of that 
ambient light coming from maybe your ceiling lights up here. Um, maybe you're, you've got a bay window or a sliding glass door. In this case, we're in a dedicated theater room, so it's not a big deal. And all your seating is straight on. But if you're in a living room position and maybe you've got, say, a couch way over here off to the side, this image is gonna be just as bright from that angle, as you can see in this video, as it is when you're in the center or on the other side of the extreme. So one thing I wanted to kind of show you guys is I've turned off my big bright lights. I've got massive studio lights, but right now we've just got your overhead lights on. And so this image looks awesome with all lights. These are full blasts and we've got six can lights above us. So a lot of ambient light is hitting this screen and this screen is doing a fantastic job of rejecting that overhead light. Um, what was the experience like with the previous screen? I'd have to turn my lights off to get the full, get this, even this kind of quality picture, because if the lights were on, it was washed out and whited out yeah. and was it, you couldn't watch it. Yeah, so in a dedicated theater room like this, you don't necessarily need an ALR screen, but what's cool is a lot of time when you're playing games or uh, maybe you're watching a football game, you wanna have the lights on because people are coming in and out, they're bringing drinks and stuff. So that's where the benefit of a CLR con uh, ceiling uh, light rejection or an ALR ambient light rejection screen helps out. So it's going to block and kind of reject uh, light coming in from the top or maybe your side windows in a living room environment. Um, but dude, I am pumped. This thing looks great. The colors pop. And like I said, we're gonna look kind of uh, different because we're underneath this lighting conditions up here. I've turned off my, my big old um, spotlights basically. But man, I'm super pumped, man. That looks fantastic. Now over at Derek's house, we've actually put together several, um, even ultra short throw projection screens. And this one kind of assembled together, very similar to that. It has a lot of those little springs. And one issue that we ran into with a lot of them is you'll run into kind of like these waves on the corners. And looking at this screen, man, it's pretty much perfectly uniform. I'm not seeing any waves in the fabric. And so that's a great testimony uh, or a testament to kind of the build quality of this. Now this is a really thin, lightweight material. So when you're building it, I would just be careful not to kind of twist it, kind of keep it upright, because we did notice that it's, it's meant to be on a wall. It's not meant to be flexed. So just be careful when you're handling it. The old screen was kind of a lot more rigid, but it was also probably twice the weight of this as well. Um, but build quality, I mean, I'm not seeing anything that, that is glaring. I mean, the corners are nice and tight. Um, around the edges and also around the seams there. Um, overall, man, it's just super clean. I love what it's done to your room and I love the immersiveness that we get in this dedicated theater room. Any other thoughts on your end as, you know, from your initial perspective and initial experience with this larger screen? I, it's just amazing. I would, I, I would recommend it to anybody. I mean, if they're going up to, to bigger screens because mm. Like you said, it is immersive. Yeah. When you as you step into it and you turn it on, you're like you're right there inside it. So oh, super cool. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'll have links to the Elite screen down in the description. And as always, you guys be blessed, and we'll catch you in the next video.